Hey everybody, MS Farzan here, and welcome back to this video series on learning JavaScript for digital tabletop game and web development. In the previous video, we looked at functions and how to use reusable functions throughout our code. And in this video, we're going to talk about conditional logic, as well as how to write for loops. Cool. So let's say that in my game, which is pretty often, in fact, there's some there are some sort of conditions that have to be met for things to happen. Like if, um, let's say I have a board game, and let's say that if uh, a person's um, health or hit points are above 10, then certain things should happen or be dis displayed on the screen. Uh, whereas if it's below 10, then um, other conditions um, have been met and other things should happen. We can use that. Uh, we can use that conditional logic in our code. And the simplest way to look at this is to use our boolean variable z, which is equal to true. So above everything that I've written here, um, in fact, I'm going to delete. I'm going to delete everything underneath our variables that we've um, declared up here. I just have let x equal hello world. Let y equal five. I'm going to delete a, and I'm going to say let z equals true. Below all this, I'm going to say console.log x. And I know that if I run my code, I'll see hello world in the command line interface. But what if I only want x to be displayed if a condition is met? I could say if, and then in parentheses, z equals equals true and then curly braces to, to create a new code block. And in the middle of that code block, I'm going to write console.log x. And you'll recall that this is indented because I'm in, in between the curly braces. That helps me keep my code um, looking clean. Save everything. And we see that the console tells us that hello, it says hello world to us, and that just signifies that um, the condition has been met. Z is equal, is is actually true. There's a little bit of a um, nuance here in that you'll notice we didn't say if Z equals true, which seems like it, it should make sense to write it that way, but um, the interpreter interprets uh, this, these, three uh, signals here, z equals true, as though I'm attempting to um, assign a, a variable. So um, that the way that JavaScript handles this so that there's no confusion is it requires you have either two or three uh, equals um, signs in between whatever uh, two things you're comparing. Um, there's a there's a subtle difference between two and three equal signs, which we're not going to deal with in this video. But it's uh, commonly a best practice to just say if z equals 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 true, um, that means if z is uh, equal to the value on the right side of the the equation, then go ahead and console log x. Let's make z false and run our code, and we see nothing's happened. Z does not equal equal true, so um, it's the, the computer knows not to console log x. Return it to true. One And so a shorthand we can do is we say if z, just in parentheses, and we see the same functionality there. That's basically saying if z or if and then your variable, um, and that variable is a boolean, then it will go ahead and uh, determine that, that that you mean if z equals equals e equals true. Uh, the converse of that sidebar is that if you say exclamation z, that means that's shorthand for saying if z equals 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 false. Same thing. So if z console log x. Underneath this, I can say else console.log z is false. This is called uh, an if else conditional statement. If 
this condition is true if z is true, console log x. Otherwise, or in JavaScript you say else, console log z is false. Let's change z to false. Run our code, and it says z is false. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, this is great for uh, the different types of conditions that you might have in your game. Um, and we'll be working with this, uh, this type of conditional log logic extensively in our development process. So it's good to know now. There are some other things that we can do here to determine, um, to exhibit um, what the computer should do with our conditional logic. Like we could say, instead of using Z, uh, true or false, we could use Y. And we could say, um, if Y is larger than five, console log, larger than 5. And now here we can say else 5. Run it. And it says 5 because y is not larger than 5. But what if we want to have a more uh, robust uh, um, condition? Well, we could say if y is larger than 5, um, do a thing. Say it's larger than 5. Else if y is less than 5, console log less than 5. And then finally, else console.log. Five, and it says five. So we're basically creating three conditions. We're saying that if uh, y is larger than five, log to the console that it's larger than five. Else, if or, um, that's a way of saying otherwise, if y is less than five, do this other thing. And then for all other conditions, we just say else log to the console that it's five. Um, you could potentially say else if y equals 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 5. I mean, that's you could do that. But the easiest way right here, because we've basically covered all of our bases, is just to say else. That's one way of handling it. And that's the basis of our conditional logic that we'll use in our, our um, uh, making games. Now, let's say that we want to, to um, not only do we want um, conditional logic, but we also want to do things multiple times. I mean, for example, if I want to roll dice, um, you know, a hundred times, I could write a hundred lines of code that that roll the dice for me, or I could just run the script a hundred times. But then, why am I using a computer to do everything for me? Um, for for uh, doing things multiple times um, and determining sometimes the same, sometimes different outcomes, we're going to do what's called writing a for loop. Uh, loops, there are many different types of loops in JavaScript, but the one that we're, the, we're going to use the most often is called a for loop. And the way we, we write this is we're going to say um, for let i equals 0, i is greater than 5, i plus plus do something. Let's, let's discuss in turn what uh, this actually means. This is a very shorthand way of saying for the number of uh, items that I am presenting to you, I want you to do this um, uh, this code block. So the way that I communicate that to, uh, to Jav through JavaScript is I say for and then parentheses. And in the first part of the parentheses, I say let i equals zero. i is just a variable. You could call it anything that you like. Let it, let's start it out at zero. It's an integer that starts at zero, and then a semicolon for to, to break up the code. And I say, um, well, I should be saying i is less than five. Um, continue to run whatever is in between these curly braces while uh, the integer i is less than five. Right now it started at zero. And then i plus plus. I, uh, plus plus is called the increment um, operator. That just means that I want to add one, the, the number one, to i every time I run this loop. Um, 
when I say I plus plus or I minus minus, that's the increment or decrement operators. That just means I want to add one um, every time to I or I want to subtract one from I every time. It's just shorthand. And the, the reason why we write it this way, we want to prevent an in, infinite loop. For example, I could say I equals zero and then I plus plus, like just add I, add to I every time and run the code in between it. And I don't set a limit and say that, okay, well, when should I stop running the loop? Should I just do it forever? And then you, you know your computer stops working? No, I wanna say I starts out at zero and then while it's less than five, um, run this code and then increment i every time add one to i so that eventually it's going to hit five and then we stop the loop we exit the loop within this code i'm going to say console.log hello world and add a semicolon afterwards and run my code and we see we've got five from our original code and then we see that we've run hello world five times which is cool and that allows me to to do a little bit more um, uh, functional uh, add a little bit more functionality here so if we bring in functions from our previous um, our uh, previous video we could say um, let new function equals function in the parentheses uh, we'll put nothing we'll st we're just declaring a new function and we're going to say if z do something else do something else and here when we uh, say if z let's say for let i equals zero, i is less than five, i plus plus console.log hello world else if z is not true we'll say for let i equals zero, i is less than five i plus plus console dot log z is false false <laughs> gotta have fun with it right okay let's delete these other code blocks and just have our our new function here and we'll run the code and nothing happens because we haven't actually called the function anywhere. <laughs> so at our at the bottom of our script, let's just say new function. Okay, and run it. And we say Z is false, Z is false, Z is false. Sounds like an alarm. Um, it just means that it's working correctly Good because Z is false. So let's make Z true. Just see what happens here. And we see hello world five times, which is great. And what's cool about here, cool about this, now that we understand both functions, conditional logic, and for loops, is that we can add a, um, an, a parameter here called number. And then we can say for let i equals zero, i is less than number. And i is less than number. And now the conditional um, the conditional logic is uh, and the the for loops are based on whatever we um, have here as a number. So we can pass into it an argument new function ten, and we should see ten lines instead of five lines, as we do here of hello world. Um, or we could pass into it a variable, and we can say new function where are we new function y so we're calling the new function passing it in passing in y 
um, as a, an argument. And then um, our for loops are going to be dependent upon that number, um, that y number, which is 5. And um, the conditions um, are, if the condition of z being true is met, we'll log one thing. If not, we'll log another thing. Save it, run our code, and we see five instances of Hello World, which is pretty cool. Um, and that's actually going to wrap it up for this video, and we're going to continue in our next video with um, uh, developing a pretty simple dice roller that will help us understand uh, more of the basics about uh, programming and lead us on our way to understanding tabletop game development um, uh, using a, a new framework. So very cool. I'm, I'm so glad that you've been watching. Thanks so much for watching this video, and I hope that it's helpful. If it has been, please be sure to like it and subscribe to my channel for more. Uh, I'd also love it if you check out my games and books at entromancy.com or nightpathpub.com slash entromancy. And even better, tell someone about them so we can continue to get the word out about my games and books. I'd love for your help in doing that. And we'll see you soon.